Um, we need to uh, get everybody unified. Um, try, uh, you know, um, outreach. Uh, you know, just get everybody together. And um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just nervous. Um, and also, um, thank you. Um, I think the biggest problem is um, awareness and the um, The problem of gang violence, drug addiction, domestic violence, they see occur in every neighborhood, everywhere. And it's the ignorant aren't going to know. It's us, the good that do know, have to take that step forward and reach out to them to teach them there is a different way. And only through example we can lead, and hopefully lead them together. Great, thank you. On that similar note, um, I think that knowledge is very important, and we have so many resources available to us through the city and through so many um, functions that we can pull out and bring to our community and show them what exactly we want to qualify for, where, where to get services done, um, to really empower our neighbors to become you know, Thank you. Um, I believe our community involvement is uh, one of the if we all get together and unite together, we can help get a better uh, community for our kids, for ourselves, and for our future generation. Without that, 
everybody we get the same results that this person or that person is going to receive. So I, I really do think it's it's great to have a model because it's going to keep everybody in touch with each other. Pretty much to echo what previous candidates have already said, I do feel that the paper can play an important part, not only in terms of outreach, but also serving part of our community identity, similar to the 4th of July parade. But with that said, we should also be able to cater, like these candidates have stated, to other languages. There's 10% of the population here in El Sereno that's Mandarin speaking. So it's definitely another avenue we can, can look at. Well, like I said, it could definitely be a channel by which we can use it to inform people about current uh, upcoming meetings as well as recent community issues that they would like to get involved with. Thank you. Hello. Um, the term community is an inclusive term. It does not exclude anyone. And so by it being a community paper, I believe it should be multilingual so that it includes all the community. Um, and again, it can be used as a resource for outreach. Some of the things that we saw as, as big challenges in the community, this can be a, a good resource for us to reach out to people and inform them of what's going on. Thank you. Uh, again, this, uh, this is true. Uh, multilingual uh, newspaper Beautiful to have. Bilingual is great. We have, we have a majority bilingual in this area. But the uh, the part of uh, using you guys for the community, that would be great because we can you know send out messages to the community. So we can let them know what programs that are coming on, what the council is doing, just updating everybody what's going on in the neighborhood to make it better for all of us. Okay. Thank you. Um, hold on one second. Do, does anyone else need water up here? Raise your hands quick. Feel free. We're good. We're still sitting. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Super rising. Better use the main. I got it. I. Say lama for the night. Uh. Ready? Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> I, I think uh, the, the greater question is um, is uh, access to um, knowledge and to what's going on in the community. So working with uh, the Community Beacon or other uh, newspapers, finding funding for them, working with local businesses to make sure that you know their um, advertisements are in the community. So we know we can be proud of it. I've, I've worked on newspapers before, and it's, you know it brings a lot of pride to the community. You know, it looks really nice. And things are. Uh, community Beacon is great because it is bilingual. All of our schools in this area in El Cerrito are bilingual. I would take a big stack of this and take it to the principal to distribute to either the PTA or the PTO or the parent group, or even if they have a parent group where they can distribute it, or to each student as well. And not only that, I would reach out to the parent group so they can give you advice or give you suggestions on what they're doing in their community so we can see more of that there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think the multi-language uh, uh, community newspaper you know, is, is needed you know, to raise uh, issues that are happening in the community and uh, to spread the word, you know, meetings like this and um, classes or any, any trainees that are available in the area or whatever's happening in, in the local area, events that I know. And, um, you know, again, you know, it'd be a great tool, you know, for us to all use. My parents used to own a newspaper here in the 40s, Spanish uh, paper, and gave it the opinion. We lost out, we went out of business. Anyway, when I got back from living in Guadalajara doing my primaria, uh, I went to Lincoln, I used to get swaps for speaking in Spanish. So I'm in my mid-70s. So I was Gringo's professor, and my taba la madre, and everybody else that was there was like me, spoke Spanish, so we all laughed, and I got swaps for me, and I la madre, I was Gringo. So I'm glad, and I thank the good Lord for this newspaper that comes to town, replaced the void. It's by far better, superior paper. Thank you. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? What do I value? What, what, what do you value about having a bilingual community newspaper distributed to our area households, and how might you envision the LA 32 newspaper being used in the future? Thank you. 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 Thank
Okay, thank you for that. Um, I do support this community newspaper as well as I support all of our publications that are online and that are individually passed out in our schools. Uh, the Community Beacon is an asset to our community because it is the community news. If you noticed any of these articles that are written in here, they're actually written by the community members. There are articles that are written by people that have offered time and effort to make the words and write them in this newspaper. So I, I really do support Thank this. You. Thank you. I think the first issue is uh, when you're trying to communicate with the community is uh, El Sereno has a difficulty to uh, access to technology. Our, our people who live here have difficulty access, or they don't even own a computer, which is ridiculous, but I think that the best way to communicate for now is through snail mail, which I love, and the a newspaper, which I, I also love. So, yes, my generation will does read the newspaper. Thank you. Thank you. I absolutely believe in the freedom of the press, but I guess the city doesn't, because the last time they asked what uh, relationship I had with the Beacon newspaper, as supposedly they get to, do, to say what I can or not say on that newspaper, that is very wrong. I'm here to represent you, find out what you need, so I can communicate it back to downtown, and downtown can communicate to us what they're going to be doing in our community, good or bad. Thank you. Yes, um, I totally agree with um, a bilingual newspaper. I think it's uh, very, it's very uh, good to have so you can, uh, again, um, outreach. Um, and the other, the other aspect of that is um, we have more than just two languages in our city. We have the Asians, and we need to try to reach out to them as well so they can be part of this. Thank you. I think uh, having a bilingual newspaper is a great idea. Um, I have the, um, I just started reading it right now. So, I mean, those are the only comments that I have on that subject. And I just want to make it clear that I didn't ask a question about a particular newspaper, mm -hmm. but you did happen to have it in front of you. So, absolutely, the neighborhood council that's elected, I'm sure we'll be talking about it. Um, we only have about 15 minutes left um, because there's so many candidates at 30 seconds it actually takes nearly 15 minutes to answer a question. So I'm going to do what I did before and break down a question into it's multi-choice. multi, multi -choice. So we'll just go down the line and you'll say um, your answer, okay? And the question is, do you support the business, the business thoroughfare on Huntington Drive for businesses or schools? Or both. So just don't even use the microphone. Just call out. Can you hear? Yes. Do you support the business thoroughfare on Huntington Drive for businesses or schools or both? So just shout out your answer so we can get through this question quickly. Businesses, schools, or both? Actually, I can't answer the question because I believe there's a zoning issue. Before, um, I think right now that it's zoned for businesses, so I cannot um, necessarily have it for something that would be not zoned. It's about, I don't have enough information. We can say you don't have 
Nobody ever has to answer a question. Okay? You can just say pass. Okay. Business? Just shut it up.
I would like to just put it out there and say um, we should just have community barbecues. That way, everybody gets to know each other instead of um, coming down to meetings that we have to do and we want to do. But I see it. It will be better for a lot of us to meet and greet at a barbecue at a park to, so we can talk what we need to talk about. Thank you. Once again, my name is Brian Pedroza. I'm a North Region candidate. What I would like to see is pretty much a little bit of everything. But of course, none of this can happen unless we have an effective neighborhood council that can bring about these changes. I think right now, we're at a crossroads with this election. Either we continue down the path that we've been going on, which has been ineffective, or we take a stand now, and this is where we decide enough's enough. And we bring a neighborhood council that's effective to bring about these changes and serve you. And ultimately, with a positive neighborhood council, an effective one that's not fighting, with, filled with fresh talent, but also with experience, we really serve you. Thank you. Really bring about Again, my name is Jessica, and I'm also running for North Region. Uh, you mentioned houses, apartments, and parks, and I think all of it, or, or sorry, businesses. I say all of it. There needs to be a diversity in vicinities. Um, by having this diversity in vicinities and businesses and homes, and it, it uh, brings a diversity in the community. Um, we need to have the businesses next to home so that there's people out there watching kids when they're playing outside, and vice versa. Um, also, to reiterate what Brian said, I'd like to. Uh, participate in making and bringing um, more changes, Thank better changes, you. improvements to what has been done in the past. Thank you. Once again, my name is Adam Bietta, my name is Just make it more inviting. An inviting community makes it a lot safer and better environment. But we can all go out walking in the evenings, taking a stroll with our children, making it all safe for everybody. That's what the community is about. And working together as a team, not individuals, because there's no IM teams. And that's what this comes to you know, a team, a group together. Thank you. My name is Raymond Diaz. Uh, I am running for the East Region Directors. Please vote for me. Uh, it's pretty much what we see as the future, as I would love to see the Neighborhood Council go to the neighborhood. You, I've seen a lot of the YouTube videos in the past, and we need to be out there. People are not going to come to us. We need to go to them. And I, I agree, you know, bringing clean streets, bringing access for bikes, making sure that it's safe for our kids to skateboard, to bike ride, things like that. That's what I, that's what I want to bring to this knowledge, experience, and a whole lot of Thank love. You. Thank you. Thank everybody. you, everybody. What I would like to bring to this community is another high school. We only have one high school, Wilson High, and it would be nice to see another one in El Sereno. And not only that, Another junior high. The junior high is the only one we have, Cal Street and Junior High. We have various elementaries and charter schools, but another high school would do us very good. So that's what I would like to see in the future. It's a it's a sky rocket high, you know, reason to try, but we'll do it. If we can. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, my name is Gamaliel Andrade, I'm working for the East uh, the East side, I guess. And um, I would like to see our communities to be safer, uh, where a child can ride his bike and not get worried about you know, getting run over, where your, our children can play kickball without you know being the fear of uh, you know of again you know just random just random people all over. I just want our community to be safer and non-sanitary. Thank you. My name is Ruben Chavez, <coughs> and I'm uh, the president of the El Sereno Veterans uh, Monument Committee. And we're partnering with the El Sereno Bicentennial Committee, the people that do the 4th of July parade, so we can look for donations uh, to the uh, uh, nonprofit. We want the uh, Veterans uh, uh, Memorial to be a uh, multi-use uh, for the whole year. We want to put a stage. It's going to be on Van Horn and Huntington Drive on that little grassy area. And uh, we're working very hard with the city to get that done. Please Thank vote you. for Ruben Chavez. Remember, Thank Chester you. Chavez. Thank Ruben you. Chavez, Thank Chavez, you. Chavez, Thank Chavez. you. Um, once again, you know, the time limit is to be fair for everybody. <laughs> they don't know Mr. Chavez very well. <laughs> so uh, I, I agree with a lot of uh, the colleagues here. And, um, or fellow board members, exactly. I want uh, green space, more schools, uh, more involvement, more outreach, and people to work together as a community. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you. It's only you.
again, my name is Ari Ruiz. I've lived in Australia for about 15 years, it's half of my life, almost. Um, um, I want to come back to serve to the community. I serve in the city, and I want to bring that nonprofit experience as well here in the Denver Council. Uh, I'm in full support of building or bringing more businesses, but they have to be uh, community owned businesses like uh, in Mexico and uh, the Brazil place left because there was not enough business, so we just need to build Thank more community oriented Thank businesses. Thank you. You know, when I teach the kids on the, on the weekend, I've been doing it for about 20 years, I kind of get upset when they start laughing at each other because somebody may not be able to read. And I told them that's wrong. Our job is to help those that can not read. As, as, as good people, that's what we're supposed to do. With my neighbors, that's what I do. Here, the same thing. If you have a problem, I hope you help. I may be rough, tough, grumpy, whatever you want to call it, but I keep what I saw and do it all my life. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, I agree a lot with um, my fellow um, constituents. Um, I'd like to see a lot um, of more involvement. Um, first of all, knowledge. Uh, we have to knowledge to get the, the community knowledgeable about what we're doing and bring them in, you know, everybody, not just uh, Spanish speaking, you know, get more people involved. That's what I'd like to see and do help. Thank you. Uh, that one nation under God, somos los ángeles de los ángeles, we can become the example, the heart can change. But we've got to look into this ourselves that the healing begin. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to use these 30 seconds for an announcement. Um, we had a son with the that passed away this past weekend. He got hit by a car. He was running his bicycle. We're going to have a car wash this Sunday at Frank's Auto Body and Pay, 4691 Hutchinson Drive, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Everybody's welcome to come. Um, she's the mother of a single parent, trying to raise two kids. Thank you. Thank you. All of you for your passion. I want to thank the audience for your great questions. I'm sorry we didn't get to them all. Um, it's been a real great. Um, it always makes me feel so good to hear how so many people are coming to the table, stepping up to the plate to run for their neighborhood council. Um, I know it's a lot of hard work. I know you can do it. There's people in the audience that can tell you how much trouble we've called, caused in Northeast. Um, it does take years to get things to happen every now and then, like a new high school, eight years. <laughs> but you can do it. And I just want to thank you all, and I want to ask everyone to join me and give them a big round of applause. Thank you. I also want everyone, we still have another 15, uh, like 20 minutes so you can meet the community, I don't know, one-on-one, -on -one, and then I want you guys to have something to eat. I know you guys haven't eaten. So now that the nerves are a little more, you know, not so shattered. So please, and thank you again for coming. I want to do make a quick announcement. If anybody would like to volunteer for the for our election Saturday, we do need volunteers. So please, there's a sign-in sheet, or you can email me directly. We do need some help. Thank you so much, you guys. So just enjoy the dinner. And if you'd like to see tonight's event, it will be posted on YouTube. For your more welcome to see yourself on the big screen. Thank you.